you ever thought about just shaving all your hair off then being a swimmer? I have done, yeah, I've thought about it, but I think my ears are too big uh, to pull off the look. Okay. <laughs> my name is Matt Richards and I'm a swimmer for Team GB. Absolutely love water, always have done, and it's probably a good job given I spend 20 odd hours a week in there. My wingspan is six foot seven. I'm only six foot two in height, so it's probably quite useful for being a swimmer. My dad's six foot five, so I thought I was gonna be a bit taller, but I got it on the arms rather than the body. It's almost like you're just taken away from normal life. You're in your own space, all your worries are taken away, and you're just kind of floating along, which is probably part of the reason why I love it so much. My name's Kay Burgess. I've been cutting hair about 20 years. I try and knock the ego out of the way and just concentrate on my client. It's not about the outside world, it's about just me and that client at the time. To be honest with you, I don't really deal with my hair at all because I'm in and out of the water all the time. I just kind of let it do its thing and that means that sometimes I come into training looking like a, a Wookiee from Star Wars. But yeah, I try to keep it relatively tame with haircuts regularly, but at the moment it's probably longer than I usually like it. Hey Matt, how you doing? Hey, I'm okay. Man. Good to see you. Nice to meet you, man. Take yeah, a you seat. too. Thank you. What are we doing with your hair today, man? Skim fade on the sides and the back, please, mate, and just okay. a little uh, tidy up on the top. A little trim off this bird's nest, yeah? Yeah, exactly, mate. Let's do it, man. <laughs> You've been training hard? Yeah, always, mate. It's been a long, I think, 18-week block so far now, so getting close to the major meets. I see you've got a lot of um, a lot of tattoos. Yeah, I've got loads all down the right arm. I'll probably get more as well, but it's more finding the time to try and get them done. Obviously, after Tokyo, I came back and usually people go straight into getting the rings and I was undecided where I wanted to get them and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna book and then I'll just try and decide like on the day. Yeah. I turned up and I was like, I've never seen anyone that's got them on the back of their hand. And yeah. so that's how, uh, that's how that happened. But yeah, I really like it. It's made for some cool Instagram photos. It's also like when I'm on, on the blocks about to dive in, the last thing I'm gonna see before I dive in is the, the rings, which is obviously what I train for every day. Are you hoping to get gold this year? Yeah, 100%. I've won gold as part of the 4x2 in Tokyo. And then this year, just, well, a couple of months ago, actually, at World Championships, I won gold on the individual 2-3 as well. So I've got a lot of momentum now, but it's just building from that and keeping working hard into the games. How does it feel to win a gold medal? It is pretty cool. So you stand on top of the podium and kind of sinks in. But you know, the plan is to have quite a busy schedule in Paris and do quite a lot of races. So a lot of it's going to be about trying to like manage those emotions throughout the week and, and just keep delivering race after race. I bet you are, your parents are very proud of you. Yeah, they're very proud. I'm an only child. So yeah, I'm very, very close to my parents and they've always been, been really supportive of me throughout the, the journey of my career so far. Do they come and watch a lot of your, your comps? Yeah, they try to. It's harder nowadays where like lots of the, the competitions I do are abroad. My mum's a teacher and my dad's a, a driving instructor now. So okay. like, it's quite hard for them to get the time off and, and also just to be able to afford to come out and watch some of them. But where they can, they do. And hopefully they'll be in the crowd for watching Paris. What's your next tattoo going to be? I kind of want to get a chess piece, like, as in the game of chess. You know what oh, I mean? OK, OK. I, I like playing chess. I'm not anything particularly good at it, but I just like the, the strategy and the, the tactics behind it. Yeah. Um, you know, it reminds me a lot of my, my sport and also just life in general. Trying to think as many steps ahead as you can and, yeah. and further ahead than, than your opponents is something I really like. So that's something I'd like to get next. It's just finding time because obviously you get them done and then you've got to try and keep it out of the water. Yeah. And with the sport that I do, that's quite, quite yeah, difficult quite to hard, do. Yeah. Do you find uh, tattoos painful? Yes and no. I mean, I, I don't think they're as bad as people say, but I do find when you've been in the chair for like six, seven, eight hours, by the time you get to the end, it starts to get sore, but I don't know whether that's just because it's a long day. Yeah, you're better than me, man. I, I scream when I get tattoos. <laughs> yeah. Some places are definitely worse than others. I've got one on the inside of my, my pinky finger and that, that one was killed. One, yeah. yeah, that one was awful. Do you do any other sports? Not anymore, no. When I was younger, I used to love rugby. It was kind of between rugby and swimming when I was younger as to what I wanted to kind of pursue. I always knew I wanted to be in sports professionally, but I didn't know didn't know what, and it was those two that really stuck out for me. What about yourself? Do you do any sports? Uh, I do a little bit of boxing. I started training oh, okay, nice. like this year. I'm way too old to even think about getting in the ring of anyone. <laughs> I've got kids and stuff now. What about you? Do you want kids one day? Yeah, definitely. I'm engaged now, so I've got, oh, a, no. got a fiance, so we're, we're due to get married after the Olympics next oh, year, nice. actually. I've always said I want one, because obviously I was an only child, that's yeah. all I've known, but she's got an older sister, so she wants two. Yeah. Um, but we'll see, see what we can have. <laughs> Your girlfriend's a swimmer, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Her name's Emily. She's from 200 Fly, so she's a bit mental in that, okay. in that respect. But yeah, she came 10th at the world, so pretty awesome result. The year before, she was about 200th in the world at the end of the season. So to, to drop that down to 10th is a pretty incredible year out from the Olympics. Is she on Team GB as well? Yeah, yeah. In swimming, we qualify for the Olympics in April. So we don't know, you know what the team will be just yet, but we're both hopeful. So yeah, yeah we'll have to wait and see. Is it fierce competition? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, so it's top two per event. For my events on the, the 100, 200 freestyle, 
just to make the team, I've got to beat the reigning Olympic champ, the reigning Olympic silver medalist, the reigning world silver medalist, a former world champ, all just to get one swim. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's tough competition, but that's what makes the country so good at the sport, I think. That's what's going to make you the best as well. Well, exactly. Be the yeah. best, you've got to beat the best. Yeah, absolutely. These guys you, you want to beat and stuff, do they help you get to that stage as well? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, the thing with my events is we, we race relays as well. So, there's only two spots that you can get to swim in individually, but then the top four will come together as a relay team. Yeah. So, there's kind of that, that camaraderie and that team teamwork and friendship that comes before the competition. What time do you have to get up in their training? Not too bad nowadays. I'm eight till 10 in the mornings most days. When I was younger, I used to do like five o'clock get ups and all that, but I've done my days of that, that stuff now. I get to go a little bit later. How long would you have to train for? Usually two hours in the morning, two hours in the pool, and about half an hour like on land either side of it. Have you ever tried diving? No, I haven't. I haven't. I think I'd be too big for it. All the divers are quite, quite short. Dainty and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the first time I ever jumped off a 10 meter platform, I, I just jumped. I didn't realize that you meant to just sort of step off it. Yeah. And so in the air, I was just, I could feel myself just falling further and further backwards. And I was like, oh, please don't land on your back. Did you land on your back? Like half and half. I kind of landed yeah. on, my, on my bum, to be honest. But yeah, that was uh, the last time I've jumped off a 10 meter platform and I won't be doing it again. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of respect for the divers. They're all lunatics in my eyes. Yeah. So Matt, on the way in, was that a lion I saw on your arm, toad? Yeah, you probably saw four, I think. Okay. <laughs> I've got uh, four different lions and a tiger. Most of the stuff on my, my right arm's all to sort of represent my family. So okay. I've got a big lion on the top of my shoulder that's there for my dad, so his, his favorite animal's a lion. Then on the inside of my arm, at the top, I've got a tiger, which is there for my mum. And I've got a little family of like three little lions going down my arm. That's there to sort of show the relationship between me and my family. And believe it or not, The Lion King's my favorite film as well, so it kind of okay. makes sense. But yeah, then I've got a big dragon's eye on the outside of my arm. So okay. most of my family sort of all hail from Wales around Cardiff and oh, Newport. Okay. So that's there yeah. to sort of represent all of them. And then the last little bits are just on the inside of my forearm all to, to sort of symbolize swimming and my, my journey throughout swimming so far. So you haven't got like a dolphin or anything tattooed on, on no, you or anything? No, no, but I've got a sailfish. Okay. So, yeah, sailfish, the fastest fish in the sea, which is why I went for that. So obviously that's what I'm trying to, yeah. that's what I'm trying to achieve in the sport, so. That's the, the, the unique thing about tattoos. They're all, they're all very personal to everyone. They're addictive, aren't they? Do you think <laughs> you get your whole body done? Um, I probably won't go the whole body, but I'll, I'll definitely have a, a large portion of my body done. Yeah. You ever thought about just shaving all your hair off then and being a swimmer? I have done, yeah, I've thought about it, but I think my ears are too big for uh, to pull off the look. Okay. <laughs> so you've achieved so much at 20 years old. You know, you're ready to smash up the Olympics. What's next? Like, have you got a lot of big goals? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I've achieved quite a bit so far, but the longer term stuff, um, you know, just on the first rung of the ladder, I've got a lot that I want to achieve. Hopefully Paris next year will be uh, the next step in ticking some of those boxes. Is this a winner's haircut for you? Yeah, it looks like it, mate. It's looking pretty sharp. Great. It's lovely to meet you. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, you too, buddy. All the best. Yeah, thank you, you too. Come back a winner. Thank you. Take care. I'm really happy. It always feels better once you've had a trim. It probably sounds stupid, but I always get a haircut before I race. Just a little shape up and make yourself feel a little bit more sharp. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're going for a job interview or like a big business deal or something, you'd probably want to go and get a haircut before it. I guess it's the same kind of principle.